Hi, this is BK from ManForWars.com and ManForWars Media, where I'm promoting polite patriotism to help nice ladies and gents worldwide, offline, locally teach kids to look, talk, and feel great, and uh, to help the same people uh, locally, offline, uh, discuss and share great stuff they find online as uh, better people making better places to live, as respected, polite patriots connecting with their neighbors, looking each other in the eye, trying to help each other out, giving people a chance to hear info they normally don't hear uh, with their own sort of normal routines and their normal in, uh, internet diet and information diet. Uh, and then they can think for themselves. If it's stupid, laugh. If it's smart, enjoy, possibly share. And um, and if you start crying or you can't talk about it, well, you got bigger issues because then you won't be able to get along with even the people you already know if you're that scared to discuss different things and you can't talk different than why talk. So that's an issue. Um, and, uh, and, and with respect to that, then you'll also get better politicians and results because uh, you'll put better ones in or you'll be more informed and empowered people who could demand more from your government or who, who, uh, who have to be people who your government gives you more because otherwise you'll complain too much. So it all works out. So check out manforce.com for more on that. See the description below for uh, what we can do about this latest COVID-19 pandemic, this bad COVID-1984 novel coronavirus, uh, and how me and my polite patriot colleagues beat swine flu last time where we lived, and how you can do a versions of the same where you live as we all kind of share patriot best practices worldwide to reach out to everybody to protect our uh, cities, states, or provinces and countries from sort of negative influences. Um, and with respect to that, let's get into this video, which is also related. It says here, AE911truth.org versus COVID-1984. How ignored experts who question experts will save us from liars. AE911truth.org versus COVID-1984. How experts who question experts will save us from liars, right? So I'm going to go through the sort of narrative of, of what this means and how um, I like to sort of uh, offer some sort of broad framing devices. So when you hear this sort of thing, it's not just sort of trivia and I'm not being trivial, trivial about it. Um, I'm trying to give uh, people ways to sort of frame uh, future information that they might run into um, that, uh, that, that can help them uh, understand and decode it, right? So um, the first point... Um, on this is um, uh, we live in a world full of experts that we are uh, trained to trust, right? We're, we're trained to trust them. We're supposed to trust them. And it's good to have experts. If we didn't have experts in anything, we wouldn't have much, right? So we do need some experts out there. I'm not anti-expert, but um, there is a lot of corruption in our world. And some of those experts are corrupt, right? Um, Alan Watt, uh, legendary uh, Canadian national treasure and gift to the world, Alan Watt, W-A-T-T, at cuttingthroughthematrix.com. He's got to dour Scottish burr, and he really breaks down sort of what's going on from a bigger picture perspective, including a historical perspective of who set up what we're dealing with now and the different institutions and how we got here and what their goals are. Plus, excuse me, um, plus he goes through some of the... Um, the, uh, the, 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 the news of the day and, and sort of what's happening right now. So definitely check out Alan Watt at CuttingThroughTheMatrix.com. At least hear some of his talks and, uh, and, and, you know, they'll help kind of give you a bigger picture perspective as well, right? Um, but Alan Watt, um, among others, has talked about all the doctors and lawyers and cops on TV, right? And spies as well as spies in movies, right? You know, why, 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 why celebrate these things? You know, most people aren't doctors and lawyers and cops and spies, right? Most people aren't. Most people are working in an office somewhere or working in a company somewhere, you know, whatever, 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 working at stores, right? Now, there's you know, obviously different, you know, things out there and there are sort of TV shows about them too. But we're sort of seeing uh, lots of shows with heroic doctors like ER and all the other ER style clones or heroic lawyers like uh, Law and Order, right? Um, you know, or cops, you know, like, um, you know, uh, we, what a CSI, CSI Miami, CSI New York, CSI Albuquerque, CSI Idaho, CSI Alaska, CSI Nigeria, CSI, why, 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 why so much CSI, right? Um, and, and spies as well, you know, why do we sort of learn to revere James Bond and, 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 and guys like that, right? Well, they're meant to teach us um, to, to trust them, right? They're meant to teach us to trust these people, to trust doctors, trust lawyers, trust cops, trust spies, trust other people as authority figures, right? Not question them the way we go, look, man to man. You know, what is it? Oh, I can't tell you too much. Extra. Bullshit, man to man or man to woman, 
right? You can tell me, right? Um, but we're, we're, we're sort of meant to, we're, we're, we're given these, these role models to trust as part of our sort of cultural engineering. And some are do a good job, no issues there. There's definitely some good doctors and lawyers and cops and, and even spies I'm not as, as sure about, but I've, I've heard there are some good ones, right? Um, and so on, right? But that's, that's to make us trust them. So it's good to understand why they're all over TV, right? Um, and when you trust them, you don't question them, right? People you're not sure about, like you go to a used car dealership and the guy's like, hey, used Toyota, you know, 87 Toyota. It's only got 50,000 miles on it, right? It's a 1987 Toyota, beautiful shape, driven by a little old lady. You're like, really? I want some proof of that. I want some verification. I'm not so sure this 87 Toyota Corolla has only 50,000 miles on it, right? But a lot of times you go to the doctor, you go to this, you go to the experts and you go, okay, whatever, I just, I need you bad. You know, I trust you implicitly, right? You don't question them as much, right? So some of the corruption and, and the corrupt ones can get away with more in terms of screwing us. So that's partly why that is done. And scientists as well, right? They're even above them. They're even more mysterious. Like there are still some scientists there, but the scientists typically show up. We don't really understand what they do, but they come up with cool solutions. And that is the scientific priest class kind of above you know, things going on, the scientific technological elite who we're sort of dealing with now when it comes to this COVID-19 pandemic. And check out my channel for, for more videos when it comes to sort of decoding that, right? Um, and, uh, and, 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 you know, the point, the second point is, is, um, you know, globalist thinkers like Zbigniew or Zbigniew Brzezinski and others, I mean, this, this is sort of philosophy. They all reflect to be in that sort of club. The globalist, super rich, evil people want to run the world with international institutions, you know, a global governance, replace national, uh, nationalism and populism in countries where people control their politicians and their future. They want sort of a global communist model, right? So they've been pushing towards this agenda for a while. And this COVID-19 pandemic is part of that push right um but the globalist thinkers like Zbigniew, which we can resist by the way they're only pushing so hard because you know we can beat them right so um otherwise they wouldn't try and spook their sheep this fast with this type of crap so uh it is important to keep that in mind and have a positive outlook when it comes to what you can do and what people around you can do to avoid getting depressed and doing nothing and thinking that they can do nothing and nobody can do anything when that is not true um now, um, but globalist thinkers like Zbigniew Brzezinski, um, he, he's, he's talked about, and others have talked about, soon the public won't know what to do without experts, right? You know, you'll, you'll hear it's raining and you'll have to be told to take an umbrella when you go to work or you go out shopping or you go out of your house, right? That's the sort of, you know, um, uh, uh, brainwashing that they want for their sheep, for us, right? To say, you need experts to tell you everything. You can't use your common sense. You can't use... 50, 100, 200 years ago, the sort of homespun wisdom of, you know, getting along with people, communicating well, understanding traditions, understanding how to do things to have happy, healthy cultures, right? That's supposed to be replaced where everything is kind of told to us or given to us uh, by experts. And we will not be able to think for ourselves and we will not be able to question those experts. So that is part of their brainwashing. Um, <clears throat> now, when it comes to this, um, where can you find, you know, uh, good experts there? Well, the alternative media, the independent media, they often use rare news that's reported but not repeated, like propaganda is. So that's something good to know, right? Uh, the mainstream media has resources to kind of get the job done, experts, they can get their phone calls returned. So they can come up with some good stuff and they will put out some good stuff, but they also use that good stuff to give them credibility to sell bullshit, right? So um, uh, the alternative media helps decode that by saying, well, this was in the New York Times. I know the New York Times is crap, but this is an important article that their editor let them get out and it's got some key information maybe not even in the headline or the top of the article but if you look further down here's some key stuff and then the independent media will make a big article about stuff the mainstream media um you know uh doesn't promote much right and um and it's it's, it's also media news it's reported but not repeated unlike propaganda which is repeated everywhere operation mockingbird cia took over control of the u.s media in the 60s um and they put sort of key people at certain big tv stations newspapers and so on and then they kind of controlled the narrative and then the smaller media smaller tv uh, newspapers radio stations typically wouldn't go against the New York Times, the Washington Post, and so on, right? And there's versions of that going on, but that's Operation Mockingbird in, in, a, in, a, in a broad sense, right? And you can look into that more on your own. Um, but they also find rare experts who question experts, right? Um, and we all need to promote these people, right? We all need to promote these people. We can't say, well, how can they be an expert? They weren't on TV. It's like, no, 
if you look at their bio, if you look at their record, if you hear them talk, if you, if you, if you, you know, look up their credentials, if you try and do some research on this, you know it's not just some schmuck, right? It's some expert who's making more sense in a populist sense that all of us can understand about a topic we're all given to understand, right? When the top World Health Organization doctors say, most deadly infectious disease ever, best thing you can do, wash your hands, stay away from people, and as often as possible, stay home. It's like, that's all we can do for the most deadly infectious disease ever. What about other sort of health tips, vitamin A, B, C, D, zinc, quinine, blah, blah, blah. You, you can do more about any flu, let alone the most super deadly infectious flu, which is mostly bullshit too. You can see my other videos for that. But, but my point is that we need to promote and celebrate great these people who work for the people and not power, right? Um, this is how we feel smart, right? We feel smart um, by, by, by hearing smart people, by hearing different things, by hearing smart people trying to talk to us, not talk down to us, but talk to us, right? A lot of the experts that, that, were, that are on TV, that are promoted by the mainstream media and so on, they talk down to us. Well, we are the experts. They've got that Nazi shrink or Nazi psychiatrist voice. They're there. Just listen to me. I know you're having trouble, but uh, if you just listen to me and you put on these handcuffs and then you uh, uh, get into the basement where all those power tools are, everything will be fine. Okay, expert, as opposed to, hey, expert, why should I do that? Why should I put on these handcuffs? Why should I go to your dirty, dark basement with a bunch of power tools laying around and blood everywhere, right? Why? No, no, don't question me. I'm talking down to you. You wouldn't understand, right? That's how they kind of brainwash us. So, um, we need experts who talk to you and not down to you, and they can be trusted. Um, and 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 you know, and, and we all do this. Like we we all do this. This is it. It just it's less and less. There's sort of a, a our, our our collective brainwashing over time is pushing us further and further away from being able to do this or talk to each other about this, right? And this is also why people have so much trouble talking to smart, knowledgeable, informed people because they've been talked to by experts in ways that talk down to them, where they can just repeat things, not explain things. But when you have experts who question experts, then you've got, there's the official explanation, that's what it is. Instead of just repeating it, I'm gonna hear an expert who sort of explains the official explanation, that's what it is, then explains a better explanation, and then goes, okay, so this is what the World Health Organization says you can do about super infectious deadly flu, Here's what a doctor who knows more, cares more, is telling you, right? The problem sometimes people run into when you talk to other people out there is they're not taught to sort of question, answer, you know, the mainstream. They're just taught to repeat it and then shut down or get upset if you can do that. So that is how people don't think for themselves, right? And that's why it's important for us to promote experts who question experts. And frankly, you know, a lot of people do it when it comes to major health decisions, right? Uh, professional athletes do it. Normal, Joe and Jane Canadian, Joe and Jane American do it, right? Doctor says you need major surgery for this. It's going to be this. The recovery time is going to be long. You're like, okay, that seems like a big decision for this herniated disc in my back that's been bothering me for a while, but that seems like a lot to go through. I want to get a second opinion, right? So the second opinion is the experts who question experts. So if you want to reach out to people there, just say, look, we all need a second opinion, right? I know you want to trust them. I know you want to believe in the system. It's being nice to us and so on. And, and in some degree, some nice people work there and sometimes they do nice things for us, but this is how we make sure they do nice things for us by being informed and empowered people. Then they can't screw us as easily. Then they've got to give us bread and circuses, candy, be stupidly happy people, not crack down on you, beat you, stay in your homes, tracked and searched and drugged and chipped, socialist distancing, never see grandma again, never hug anybody, handshake anybody again. You know, live online, don't, don't go offline, you're not essential, you know, you're useless eaters, like that type of crap, right? So we got to push back against that. Um, now the media and, and other groups, media, big media, big academia, big government, big jerks, right? Um, they often try to destroy experts who question them and question their group think, right? Um, because they believe in scientific consensus, right? Well, the science says this, the science says this, but scientific consensus is bullshit. It's bullshit. There is no scientific consensus. There is no settled science. It's bullshit. Anybody tells you that, well, this is what the science says, it's bullshit. 
because science is always a process of asking questions. It's always a process <clears throat> of challenging the existing science, right? You know, the Wright brothers, you know, when they um, when they built their first airplane in like the early 1900s, right? They were like, there were scientists who were saying, there's no way you could get something to fly in the air for any length of time. You know, we kind of understand there's a downdraft sort of principle where if you, you know, throw a piece of paper in the air, it kind of goes like this and then lands, right? So there is some, you know, air resistance to it just sort of falling, you know, you know, you know, super fast. The, the thing will, you know, there is some sort of pressure principle there. But there were scientists before the Wright brothers built the first airplane who said, this is not possible. I'm a scientist. I'm a physicist. I'm an engineer. It is not possible to build something that flies in the air and carries something as heavy as a human being. You're crazy. But then they went out and did it, and it is, right? And it was not possible to send radio waves. It was not possible to have wireless phones, right? Cordless phones, right? Uh, cordless phones and then cell phones, right? All these things were consensus at one point. It was not possible that the... Uh, 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 so that the earth revolved around the sun, it used to be the sun revolved around the earth was the thinking, and they threw Galileo in jail for that, right? So my point is that there is no settled science. When people tell you that, you know it's bullshit, right? And um, and if anyone uh, dismisses that instead of answers that, they're corrupt, right? Because smart people, right, all the great thinkers in history, right, just about all, all your favorite intellectuals, religious figures, artists, um, you know, uh, uh, novelists, whatever, uh, singers, right? Whatever. They all make the complex simple uh, for, for, for all of us to understand, right? That's what they can do. If they can't do that, they say it's too complex for your dumbass, then they're lying or they're being corrupt. Or maybe in the rare case, they really can't explain it. But even top nuclear physicists and top scientists and top whatevers, right? they can typically have some version that most people can understand. Top lawyers, right? Um, they may have their own jargon. Excuse me. Um, um, no allegory. Um, but they may have their own jargon. They may have something or other. Um, but but they can typically make it, so, m m give you some sort of explanation of what they do. It's not so complex, right? They may not want to. They may whatever. But they can. And if they care about you, they will. And if they don't, you shouldn't care about them. So do keep that in mind. All the great thinkers in history, all the smart people in history have made the complex simple for everyone to understand. That's what most people, excuse me, try and do, including people who digest a bunch of information and make blogs like this and other people working in the independent media space, right? Um, so the next point is when the media can't destroy um, an expert who questions experts, they try to ignore or hide them, right? They try to ignore or hide them because when they can't destroy, when the credibility is too great, they, they try to ignore or hide the fact that these experts exist, right? And that brings me to architects and engineers for 9-11 truth, right? So this is a, um, a group here, right, which, um, which is founded uh, several years ago by Richard Gage, right? Now, this is the thing, right? As Dr. Shiva Ayadurai, right? Dr. Shiva, S-H-I-V-A, and then Ayadurai, A-Y-Y-A-D-U-R-A-I. So remember Shiva Ayadurai, look up his stuff on YouTube or your preferred video platform and, and understand that he is an MIT scientist, invented email, certified by the Smithsonian, all of his original documents when he was a teenager, uh, MIT PhD, multiple degrees, immune system specialist, um, and 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 he went to went to, to you know he, he went to the big schools. He hangs with the big boys. He lectures you know other doctors on on a lot of these topics and so on. But he's not just a scientist, right? He's also an engineer, right? He is he is and he he trusts engineering more than science because science can be theory. Science can be like theory, you know, theory is if we shut everything down and you all stay away from each other, this thing would have killed 100 million people. Now it'll kill, you know, 10,000. It's like, well, we didn't know much about it then. Apparently we don't know much about it now. So how did you come up with that, right? Um, that's sort of science. It can be more uh, speculative, more theoretical. Engineering is more about making something work, right? If you engineer a car and the car doesn't move, then it didn't work. Right. If you engineer a house and the wind blows and the house falls down, then it didn't work. Right. So engineering principles based on physics are more reliable 
than scientific principles based on theory, right? Molecular biology, science, this and that, whatever, vaccine science and whatever. It's like, you know, the best way to boost your immune system is eat healthy and uh, and, and, and take supplements and, and so on and get some sun and be social and so on. And uh, if you are going to take in, you know, uh, any sort of toxins, which you have to, to boost your immune system, you should take them in naturally, right? You should take them in naturally. So little babies, little kids, right? You don't wrap them in bubble wrap, right? And say, nope, nope, don't touch anything. Don't touch anything. You let them crawl around. You let them go here. They put their hands on this. They put their fingers in their mouth, right? And they're getting little bits of dust and little bits of crap and their body's developing an immunity to it, right? Because it's going in through their nose where you've got uh, nose hairs and you've got snot. It's going in through your mouth where you've got saliva and you've got sort of a, um, you know, it goes down your, your windpipe and so on. It's going in through your skin, right? Some of it's through your eyes, got a membrane there, right? And, and so that's how you take in these things, right? Now, the vaccine scientists say, you know, what's a good idea? Instead of sneezing, somebody sneezed and then you kind of absorb some of that, that particulate, you know, through all these filters your body has, we're going to take this and inject it directly into your bloodstream. It's like, ah! Right? So it bypasses your immune system, causes a huge autoimmune reaction. Your body fighting it causes things like autism or micro strokes where your face is frozen or other forms of paralysis and so on, right? So, but that's science, right? And if they, if you don't get sick, they'll say it worked. If you do get sick, they'll say, eh, it happens, right? Or you were sick from something else. Or if it makes you a little bit sick and you got to buy more big pharma drugs later uh, to, 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 you know, because you're like, oh, I took a vaccine and it was poisoned in my bloodstream and it, it bypassed my body's normal immune system. Uh, now I'm chronically this and I need some drugs for that, right? That's part of the model, right? And you, look, you can look into that more for yourself. The theory is good because we've heard the theory over and over again. They cured polio, this and that, but it's all bullshit, right? There's, there's a bunch of bullshit behind it. You can look into that more. I won't get into that, that point right now, but I'm just explaining to you that the science can fuck with you more than the engineering can, right? The engineering has to prove things from a physical and physics perspective, whereas the science can be more theoretical and they can put, you know, hey, we're going to put vaccines in your bloodstream. Oh, those dead viruses aren't stimulating your immune system enough. Well, we'll put in adjuvants, which is slang for poison, which is like mercury and thimerosal and other toxins and, and aborted fetal tissue. And if we put all that shit into your bloodstream, your immune system is going to react like crazy. It's really going to be stimulated. Sure will. You know, just like, you know, a, a punch in the face stimulates your immune system or a shot in the head. Your immune system goes crazy trying to, trying to, trying to fight it, right? And so, so the science can be more corruptible than engineering. Um, and with respect to that, I'll get back to architects and engineers for 9-11 truth, right? This is ae911truth.org, right? And what they say, broadly speaking, because it's like, oh yeah, what happened, right? Here's what we know. Here's what we know for sure. The official story is impossible, right? It's impossible. The official story of these two planes hit these two towers, they turned into dust, right? That's impossible. And then there was the third building to turn into dust that day too, sort of fall at free fall speed, like it had explosives in it, like you're taking down a an old building in Las Vegas or wherever. It's like, we have to demolish this building. Why? Wow, because this building is only 25 stories. We want to put up a 100-story condominium. So what do we do? We wire explosives inside that building, and it all sort of collapses at the same speed, free fall speed, like there's no resistance to the debris, like it doesn't like, oh, this part fell, it landed on this part, landed on this part, landed on this part. It just sort of boom, boom right? So that we know that um, that it's not possible, right? For the plane, airplanes to do that to buildings or the third building, World Trade Center 7, which had small fires to do that, right? Just like if I um, if I took this pencil, right? And and I and I tried to, 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 to um, punch it through the cell phone, right? It might, I might be able to break the cell phone if I hit it hard enough. I might. I might be able to do that. Something physics would say that something is going to happen if I really stab this or a hard metal knife or pen, right? I could probably break the plastic on this cell phone, but it wouldn't turn into dust, right? It wouldn't be like, boom, and then, psh, oh my God, it's turned into powder, right? That's what happened on 9-11, right? So, uh, and there's many, many, many more anomalies, right? And since it's been almost 20 years, it's good to sort of understand that. And so, you know, um, here is ae911truth.org. And this is what I mean by experts the media ignores or hides, right? This is what they do, right? 
Um, Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. Controlled Demolition speaks out, says this is definitely a controlled de demolition. University Building 7 report contradicts the official conclusions. And these are architects. I mean, you could just see it from my explanation. If you think about it, go, uh, I guess it is kind of weird that it turned to dust, but the planes hit them, which I think happened, and, and there was fire, which I think happened. But other buildings have been on fire, and they haven't crumbled into dust, right? They just kind of, eh, fire beats this, and eh, sway, and uh, shake, and this, and, uh, you know, definitely damaged, right? But not dust, right? Um, and so it says here, um, thousands of experts are speaking out. More than 3,000 architects and engineers have signed our petition. View every signatory, right? And this is related to COVID-19 and the COVID-19 pandemic and can definitely be related, you know, so on, right? And, uh, you know, these professionals who collectively have over 25,000 years of experience are signing our petition. There is Richard Gage, an architect, and there is some flashing architects who are coming out. Um, you know, a localized failure in a steel frame building can't collapse in free fall. You can join. And this has 3,287 architects and engineers and 27,000 members of the public. And Richard Gage and his team certify these are architects and engineers. They look into their background. They look for documentation, right? And you can be an architect or an engineer who understands physics, like you understand how buildings are made, what the principles of physics are. And you can look at this. I mean, a lot of them go, ah, that's planes hit the buildings and you know they fell of course right but then they're like okay hold on let me let me you know because that's the lay person's perspective right which is well of course planes hit buildings of course man doesn't happen every day right and even a lot of architects and engineers and other people are like of course right because that's the mainstream narrative being pushed right however when they break it down from a physics perspective and they say you know that's not technically possible right and here's the studies here's the science here's the data here's the research here's the experiments we've done to sort of you know verify this and so on so these are people that the media wants to ignore right and there's you know 3287 arctic snares and 27000 members of the public you know because we're supposed to be dissuaded from talking about this because it's you know uh, bad it's wrong it's mean to the victims but if your family was killed in in, in these attacks you might want justice, you might want truth, you might not want to just go along to get along with, you know, whatever it is, the official story and, and social pressure and whatever. Just like if, if you're, you know, if, if, if your neighbor kidnapped and killed your kid and everyone in the neighborhood was like, well, eh, not really saying that happened. You know, I think just t little Timmy fell down a well. You'd be like, no, no, no. Fighting for justice for my kid, for my family member, right? And um, it says here, as family members of 9-11 victims, we have been seeking truth and transparency since 2001. We must applaud Mr. Gage and his colleagues at AE 9-11 Truth for their tenacity in seeking to answer lingering, lingering questions concerning the total destruction of World Trade Center buildings 1, 2, and 7. Patty Casaza, Lori Van Aken, Mindy Kleinberg, and Monica Gabrielle. And you can read more about their statement, but there it is. Right? And, 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 and so on. And it's got the latest news. Help raise 9,000 by Friday to air 7 to 3 million PBS viewers, right? And on and on and on. So they are doing stuff and they are going to court and they are suing people and whatever. Request for correction, what, what it means and how NIST might respond. The National Institute for Standards and Technology in the U.S., right? A11 uh, teaser for much anticipated Building 7 documentary. That is the third building to fall in the exact same way and turn into dust. And the key is it wasn't hit by a plane. So it's like, well, how did that happen? There was small fires on one floor, which again, no doubt it would damage them. Um, but but how did it turn to dust, right? And, and on and on and on. So AE 911 Truth is, is, is definitely worth getting out there because it's related to this. It's related to exposing this bullshit. The people that ignore this, the media that ignores these people, are media that cannot be trusted. And so it is good to, uh, to to trust each other to pass that on and to expose them as fake news. Like Trump's like to say, fake news, right? Yeah, well, look, 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 right? How do you ignore 3,000 architects and engineers on this, right? Um, now, um, on that, I'm going to switch to um, the next uh, last part of this, which is uh, COVID-19, right? And, um, and, 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 um, and we need to share experts who question the need to panic who questioned the computer models, who questioned the approach to this from the start, who questioned how dangerous and deadly this is, and on and on and on, right? So 
I just did a quick search here for experts question COVID. I, I typed in experts question COVID, and then the word panic popped up in DuckDuckGo.com, which is supposedly a better alternative to Google. Does a really good job on search results, supposedly better on privacy, um, and you're not feeding the giant evil Google beast. But that's what came up, right? And so um, the first is a couple of news stories. But the, you know, the, the first article I have here is um, 12 experts questioning the coronavirus panic from Off Guardian. And there's another copy at globalresearch.ca. So this is the initial thing. 12 experts question coronavirus panic, right? Um, and then 14 experts on YouTube, 10 more experts, 10 more experts. So this is on top of the 12 from Off Guardian and on and on and on, right? And this is what I mean by we say we need experts questioning experts, right? Um, you know, and, and on and on and on. So what I'll do is um, just for no argument's sake, I'm going to look up the first article I found here, right? This is from off-guardian.org, off-guardian. might be a play on the UK's Guardian mainstream newspaper kind of doing a shitty job uh, when it comes to getting the truth out there. And it says here, from March 24th, 2020, and it's 1,038 comments, 12 experts questioning the coronavirus panic, panic. Below is our list of 12 medical experts whose opinions on the coronavirus outbreak contradict the official narratives of the MSM and the memes so prevalent on social media. So there it is. And there's some pictures. And I don't think these guys are organized like architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth are. But I think they could be. And I think more, more of us can organize lists like this and collections like this. And uh, and I know more than more than these people, you know, uh, and so on. So, um, but here's an example. Dr. Sucharit Bhakti is a pe specialist in microbiology. He was a professor at the Johannes Gutenberg University in Mainz and head of the Institute for Medical Microbiology and Hygiene, one of the most cited research scientists in German history. What he says, we are afraid that 1 million infections with a new virus will lead to 30 deaths per day over the next 100 days. But we do not realize that 20, 30, 40, or 100 patients positive for normal coronavirus is already dying every day. Basically saying, people already die from the flu. People already die from coronavirus, especially if they have comorbidities, as uh, Dr. Erickson said. And by the way, Dr. Erickson and another doctor um, out of California had a press conference. They, it was on April 22nd. It was on some local TV's uh, YouTube channel. And yesterday, in the morning when I shared it, I saw it, I shared it, right? It had 4.3 million views, right? And and I shared it. It's mom and dad and family friendly. They're two good looking doctors, been working in the ER for like, you know, uh, 10, 15 years, right? And they're coming out and saying, you know, um, there's we have two months worth of data right now. We've got data from all over the place and we can say this is a lot less dangerous than the normal flu, right? Based on the studies, it's like 0.0013%. So the normal flu is more deadly than this. And the shutdowns are a mistake. And even if people were worried early, we should end them now, total crap. We can't isolate people and have them weaken their immune systems in isolation, obsessively cleaning everything. And then we open up and they go back outside and they get whacked by different bacteria and viruses and they fall sicker than ever right plus laying off hospitals plus much more uh, job costs when it comes to jobs when it comes to social issues child abuse uh, domestic abuse you know lots of these cases are going up alcoholism suicide depression all these things are happening and so it's like not only is it the wrong response to this but you know blah 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 so they had a, a 50 minute uh, about, you know just about 55 zero minute uh, press conference and the media was there asking him some hostile questions and some reasonable some you know extra stupid or hostile but whatever I don't mind a media that uh, that's a little confrontational not just kiss and ass um, um, but um, it had 4.3 million views in the morning and I shared it and shared it with a bunch of people it's mainstream mom dad and family friendly it's got four and a half million views on YouTube right 4.3 million right then I checked in the evening in the evening, same day, yesterday, April 27th, 2020, uh, five days after the April 22nd thing, it had 5.3 million views. And it wasn't just me sharing it that had a million people watching it. Everybody was sharing it, right? And then later on that evening, I went to check the link just to see whatever. And even after I'd shared it with a doctor friend of mine to say, hey, peer to peer, check this guy out. Don't believe me, right? Check these two doctors out. Gone from YouTube, copyright violation or violated their term, community's terms, right? Community service terms, whatever. Um, so YouTube deleted it. Two doctors, you know, four and a half million people in the morning, five and a half million people yesterday evening, and then 
bam, gone, right? Tucker Carlson and Laura Ingram both talked about them on their show last night. I see little clips on the Fox News channel sometimes. You know, before I go to sleep, I'll watch a little five minutes of Tucker, five, ten minutes of Laura Ingram sometimes. Um, and they both talked about these doctors because they're both, you know, wait a minute. We can't just blindly trust scientists who are obsessing about this and worried about this. We can't just let politicians get too much power, bureaucrats get too much power over us. What if they don't give it back? What if this is a mistake? What if America never recovers? What if the world never recovers from this? We can't say things will never be the same again. This is our new reality, right? So they shared this. And, you know, around the same time, yesterday evening, um, bang, gone, right? Now, I've got a backup copy on my BitChute channel. Check out the links below. Um, and, uh, and you can see it for yourself. You can see how compelling it was. I really enjoyed it. I go a step further than these two guys, and I've got other, you know, experts and sort of common sense to kind of back that up. But when it comes to something that everybody could share with everybody, these guys were perfect, and, and they weren't getting all, all out there in terms of why this is going on. They alluded to some, it's not making any sense, right? So you might want to look into that too. But they were sticking truly from a doctor science you know, personal perspective when it comes to their experiences over the last two months and studying the data from all across America and around the world for the last two months going, you know what, we know now, right? Early on, we might have been spooked, but we know now. Um, and, and I bring that point up to say that, yeah, there's, there's YouTube censoring experts who question experts, right? And, and that's what they do. Um, and so, yeah, he says, and, and even those doctors said, yeah, the, you know, this is, we don't freak out over the normal stuff when normally, you know, you know, 20, 30, 40, or 100 patients positive for normal coronaviruses die every day just like this. And then he says, life expectancy being shortened of millions, services to patients are need are being reduced, empty hospital personnel are dwindling, they're being laid off, you know, so they're not really, they're not treating other illnesses, they're mislabeling, they're being pressured to label everybody a COVID-19 death and on and on and on. And then Dr. Wolfgang Wodard, German physiology specialist, and what he says, they've got quotes and they've got a video where you can hear them yourself. There's Dr. Joe Joel Kettner at Manitoba University in Canada, former chief public health officer. Never seen anything like this. This is crazy. We have uh, pandemics every year, um, or, or or flu, you know, flu season every year. Sometimes it kills 50,000, sometimes it kills 100,000. But we don't freak out like this. And this isn't that much worse. You know what I mean? This isn't uh, this isn't worse. Period. Right? Um, you know, another one professor at Stanford, Dr. Joan Ionita or John Ionitas, right? real maverick. And these are people who can say, you know, I've got, you know, check out my bio, check out my this, check out when they invited me to lecture in front of a group of 300 other doctors or scientists, right? Like I've done all this. So now I'm suddenly an idiot, right? Like it doesn't make any sense, right? Like I interviewed Professor Timothy Ball um, about global warming, and, you know, back in 2007 on my radio show, right? And I looked into his bio, looked into him, saw all the things he's done, yet he had taught, taught at a university there. And, 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 you know, I've interviewed him a couple of times, you know, uh, and, and, and the point is that he, this guy who was a top climate scientist for 30, 40 years, right? You, climate conference to talk about the weather, talk about this, talk about new ways to measure what the weather's going to be, atmospheric pressure, blah, 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 blah. Top, 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 top climate scientist who lectured other climate scientists. As soon as he came out and said global warming was bullshit, Bang, guy scumbag, guy works for big oil, guy's incompetent, doesn't know what he's talking about. What? How did you suddenly go from a top scientist, top doctor, top researcher, top expert to being a moron, right? Doesn't make any sense. So it's important. Um, and um, and so, yeah, and the lockdowns, a prison term for when prisoners riot and freak out and you got to lock them in their cells are not necessary and on and on and on. So this Off Guardian article is a list of 12 and it should grow to a list of 1,200 or 12,000 experts who question this COVID-19 pandemic, this bad COVID-1984 novel coronavirus hoax. And this video is meant to encourage us to try and start to do more of that. And there you have it. Um, so anyway, uh, BK from manforwars.com. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, share, get in touch with questions, answers, uh, ideas to work together or financial support. See the links below. Use clips of this if you'd like or repost and so on. Let me know if you'd like. Um, otherwise, I do hope this helps and I hope that we uh, we can get started on doing more stuff like this and I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.